Tere olen teid kõiki näha siin meeldivõl laupäeva õhtupoolikul. Nüüd kui me oleme kogunenud siia helikunsti ja sellega seonduvaga seoses kohtuma. Mina olen siin selleks, et rääkida lähemalt oma esimesest solo shows nimega Skeletons on Rock, millise ma albumi formaadis andsin välja Austria plaadifirma Laton all 2009. aastal. Et kui me läheme, või kui mina lähen sõgavamale, siis mulle tundub, et on tark hoiatada teid. Et üle jäänud loeng saab toimuma inglesi keeles. I welcome you all to a a kind of a skeletons on rock show, which is actually a, a sound lecture, as we used to call it years back when we uh, did shows with the well-known and established artist Kiva, known also by the citizen name Janus Kivasta, for those who don't know their real name. And uh, we did play around with identities, the, uh, the issue of death of author was pretty much in the air, and, and so forth. Also, one of the, the core um, ingredients of our uh, toolbox was displacement something that is uh, neatly put in an Estonian word, four letters. Nihe. Um, something that I, uh, I took for a, perhaps a, the grand platform for uh, all my most experimental works during the days, uh, but uh, it has been Mm, widened by Kiva mm, up to a uh, complete zero as he is now mainly dealing with nothing. Me, on the other side, um, I'm dealing with something. I still don't know what it is and I guess some of the musical materials would describe what has been going on during the, uh, those years. Mm. It's almost four years since I did the last show with Skeletons on Rock. And uh, before I uh, fall into a, a further uh, introspective uh, showing, I would like to show you a few pictures. This is me. Uh, four years ago with uh, one of the posters of the Skeletons and Rock um, album uh, and it looks like like this it has all the, the tracks uh, listed on the on the on the on the poster and here you can see uh, my letter to the, the designer which was basically um, a kind of a glossarium or a, like an, uh, short uh, it was like spasms of short introductions to all the tracks uh, one by one uh, so he decided to put um, a portrait of my uh, a, a written portrait on the album cover. Normally, solo albums would feature um, uh, a portrait of a visual kind. I did have one on mine. Even though you probably can't see that. It's on the cover. Let's see if it works. 
here uh, on the on the on the left side of uh, of the cheeks, you can see a further contours of a uh, condom in one of the back pockets, pointing out a kind of a rock and roll attitude. And uh, why I started this whole uh, skeletons and rock project was basically a uh, a, a bow to the whole rock and roll movement and the, and the history of rock and roll, which has uh, been going on for three, four generations by now, uh, a fully established um, cultural format, probably one of the greatest inter uh, inventions of uh, the 20th century. Uh, also, why I was uh, interested in rock and roll um, as an artist, was the kind of a, a playful uh, nature of the of the whole, uh, or the the attitude, the rock and roll attitude, so to say. So what I was um, trying to do was to um, jump out of myself, I guess. Uh, I created a character. His name was Andras Lowe, and he looked like that wore uh, the white trousers and, 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 and the rest of it. And uh, he knew people. And he would wander around uh, at the backstages of rock shows. The father of Estonian rock. Note uh, the obvious similarity. Another lookalike with a, with, a, with a great comment on the right side. It says, just to forget. The poses. Moshing to a band called Tolmunut Mesibu, which is, uh, well, perhaps you can Ask somebody Estonian to translate it. It's a little too difficult to me, but it is uh, a, uh, a um, not a doom rock, but perhaps a, a kind of a, a darker kind of a rock band with uh, no singer. Uh, there's a lot of rock and roll attitude going on here. Sorry? Well, uh, it was the, it was Tolman and Mesipu uh, playing and I was uh, rocking to them. It looks like that. Um, some important people of Estonian rock scene here. The guy on the right, the biggest, is uh, uh, by, known by the nickname Room Size. Uh, he's a sound manager at uh, Eventec, the biggest uh, sound equipment provider in Estonia, and perhaps in the whole region, very rock and roll. I've met the guy, love him. Uh, yeah, more. Note the fila wearer here on the, on the, on the other side. Uh, rock includes all kinds of attitudes and... Uh, and uh, clothes. So, yeah. uh, more awkward poses. That's rather nice. Mm -hmm. So that was going on for some while and I partnered with a uh, photographer who, uh, who was um, uh, happy um, enough to um, document this idea of me jumping out of myself but still in my own name. It was a kind of an out-of-body experience in this uh, rock and roll bracket. Uh, apparently rather narcissistic. On it goes. And a few examples of the actual wave. What is wave editing? As it were, in the days I was using uh, a well-known program, SoundForge, 
one of the most well-known wave editing programs uh, to edit waves. on my PC. What I've always enjoyed in arts is a kind of a, 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 an element of uh, um, simplicity. Uh, things being reduced to a uh, um, something very simple. And this wave editing uh, program was uh, my introduction to the world of electronic music. Before that I was a drummer and uh, this is where the, uh, the word skeletons uh, is derived. I see drumming as a, uh, a, a kind of a backbone of, of uh, rock, for example could be other other styles as well but but um, yeah grand what I'm going to do now uh, is perform a few songs and tracks and uh, it's probably going to be slightly awkward slightly slash uh, glamorous slash uh, awkward again, slash thoughtful, slash conceptual, slash boring, slash right here, right now. Last but not least, this is my grandmother. I went to visit my grandmother shortly before she died, uh, just to pay respect for she is the one I think uh, gave me the, the rock scene, the, the rock gene. I tell you, we build it more. The first track I'm going to present you is something called
Thank you. You're too kind. Thank you. Oman was uh, mainly based on just one sample from uh, um, a David Bowie song called uh, Life on Mars. Basically, I wanted to have a, a kind of a, a peak, peak element of something orchestral, and it happened to be uh, that song. Obviously, there's a, a link to uh, a kind of a link between mine and his work, but it's probably just a bone structure. Here's the first song uh, that I ever wrote as a solo artist. It's called Viennese Vodka Vampire, and um, it was, it is dedicated to a, uh, a real person, um, an artist uh, who is um, hiding herself behind the uh, Moniker Kaspar von Tannenbaum, and uh, she is a she. Um, she wore vampire's teeth when I met her, and uh, that's why I, uh, yeah, vodka, and uh, we, it was a great party. Short and uh, how should I put it? Desireless love affair.
Yeah. A strong element of syncopation. Basically a riff from a helmet track. And probably I'm going to be sued by now because I'm giving out all these references by now. Nobody knew about that. Even though it's somehow printed on the poster as well. And later on, if you like, you can have a few copies of those posters with my signature. What I was interested in this track called Selective Memory was uh, a jazz element, so to say, with a twist of experimentalism. With a twist of rock. So obviously what I was trying to do while I uh, compiled the album and the, and the show was uh, to uh, kind of balance myself in between the art world and the, uh, the world of rock and roll. So what I wanted to, to have was a, uh, a rock and roll experience in the art world. Here's a list of beats, simply called discography.
smashed his fenders. Yeah. Strobo. Pretty bird. Stop thinking. Buddy boo, buddy boo. Flock, flock, shoo. Pretty bird. Why can't you stop thinking? 
It's just a glass box of emotions. Why don't you fly out? Why don't you fly out? Stop thinking. Buddy boo, buddy boo. Flack, flack, shoo. Pretty bird. Why can't you stop thinking? It's just a glass box of emotions. Why don't you fly out? Why don't you fly out? Trigger, Trickster, the previous one, and Unruly Bird, they were called. Stereo track on your SoundForge, for example, it could be uh, another wave editing program, Audacity, or or, or other. And uh, you would all the only have a, a toolbox of the simplest effects, basically some reverb, some delays, maybe. But the main thing would would be cut up. So the only way to build a track in a wave editing program would be linearly. Basically, you would need to kind of map it in your head and, uh, well, if you would have a uh, structureless uh, musical piece in your mind, perhaps it, it would be uh, some, uh, somehow easy, but uh, with rhythms, some technique.
And last but not least, Rubik on the shores of Rubicon. the vagina of conventions. Nevertheless, when that sliding continues in its bivectorial pulse, an intelligent slider eventually thrusts into an orgasm. That, my dear friend, denotes birth of a new style, a shift of paradigm or at least a shiver in the world of pop music.
Aitäh. Thank you.